hopefully uh, go to uh, law enforcement, maybe after uh, my service in the military. Not all the cadets will become cops, and that's okay with LAPD officers. We see just an enormous um, um, response to the outreach of the LAPD in reaching young people and helping them be uh, not necessarily police officers, but to be whomever they want to be in life. So far, more than 6,000 teens have graduated the LAPD cadet program, giving them a boost up in life, career, and personal skills. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. For more information on the cadet program, visit lapdcadets.com. While the LA Central Library bridges the cultural gap with donated bilingual books celebrating Chinese culture, Gil Reyes reports from the gift-giving ceremony. Wrapped in pretty red bows, celebrated Chinese books like Quotations from Confucius are hand-delivered as gifts to the LA Public Library system, free for us to read or borrow practically any time. And you don't have to understand Chinese to enjoy them. These works are also in English. Many thanks to all the people who make this happen. Over 300 titles donated by Nishan House out of Shandong, China, here to the LA Central Library in downtown LA, helping to bridge the cultural divide between Angelinos, Chinese Americans, and centuries of culture and artistry from the great Chinese people, attitudes displayed in these books. The wisdom of Chinese philosophy, politics, poetry, and more. You'll find it at the library's International Languages section that's on the first floor. And we strive to provide content and programming that will appeal to our wonderfully diverse audiences in L.A. And this relationship uh, that we celebrate today with Nishan House will only help us uh, uh, accomplish that goal. Take a look. It's in a book, a reading rainbow of cultures that make up Los Angeles. Check it out. At the L.A. Central Library in downtown, Gil Reyes for L.A. This Week. Nishan House also donated books to the UCLA East Asian Library for students to enjoy. Well, one termed-out council member is giving his farewell to the city a literary flair. Bernard Parks is making a mega donation to some local libraries as a parting gift. Anna Marcos shows us why. Library users at the Hyde Park Miriam Matthews branch in South L.A. could soon see some new literary perks. This branch is one of several libraries in District 8 that just got a huge windfall in the form of a $30,000 check from outgoing council member Bernard Parks' office. Many people would not have access to this type of resource if it weren't for the libraries. And I tell you, this commission will keep your dream alive. <laughs> Thank you very You can much. count on it. Park says he has always supported libraries. He was instrumental in getting library staffing and services back on track in the wake of severe cuts during the 2010 budget crunch. For him, libraries fill an important gap in communities like his. We are number one in our uh, number one in underemployment. We're number one in lowest paid jobs. We're number one in the fewest paid jobs. We're number two in homelessness. We have the, some of the lowest uh, API scores uh, on our schools. That's why we need to continue looking at literacy to put people in a position to where they can thrive in the future. The money will be split among five different libraries, so each branch gets about $6,000. So what does $6,000 buy? It buys um, uh, books and records and DVDs that can complement the services. In each community, the uh, staff and the uh, branch manager will decide how best to spend it. The end-of-term parting gift, just one of many things helping this library stay up to date. Although laptops and iPads can now be used at several libraries, this will soon become the first branch that allows library users to check them out and take them home. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. Park's donation to the libraries comes from his discretionary office fund, an account that makes funds available for council members to use for projects in their districts. And after a half a century of public service, council member Bernard Parks is retiring from politics. The prominent civic leader will be termed out of office after three terms representing South L.A. Gil Reyes looks back on a career that began as a cop during the civil rights movement. <laughs> 
The year was 1965. Human rights leader Malcolm X was assassinated in New York. Black marchers demanding voting rights came under attack in Selma, Alabama. And here in L.A., riots broke out in the community of Watts. Also that year, Bernard Parks, a General Motors factory worker, joined the LAPD. No one expected him to climb far up the ranks. There was a number of things that just were understood, that there were jobs in which blacks just didn't work. But Parks broke the mold to become chief of police in 1997. He was appointed by then-Mayor Richard Reardon. Outspoken and independent, Parks battled the police union and exposed bad cops in the infamous Rampart police corruption case. By the end of his term, he fired 130 problem officers. We sent the clear message that discipline and accountability could be put in, put in place. At the same time, in that five years, we reduced crime to the levels of the 60s. His celebrity grew. Parks even graced People Magazine's 50 Most Beautiful People issue with stars like Leonardo DiCaprio and Gwyneth Paltrow. But tragedy followed. In 2000, his granddaughter was shot to death, an innocent victim of gang violence. Then, after five years as chief, the police commission and then-Mayor James Hahn decided not to reappoint Parks. So, with the support of his wife, Bobby, Bernard Parks campaigned for a seat on the L.A. City Council, the 8th District seat representing mostly black neighborhoods in South L.A. And so we ran in uh, our first election. I think we got 78% of the vote. He'd go on to serve three terms. As former chair of the Budget and Finance Committee, he helped steer the city from bankruptcy during the recession. He protected tenants' rights, pushed for development in blighted areas, and promised to fix 400 sidewalks by the time he leaves office. Through it all, he remains staunchly independent, oftentimes voting against council colleagues on pet projects and labor issues. I'd rather be independent with integrity than be a part of a herd that says I gave up my values and principles just to be amongst the group. I think about what decisions I made to continue moving forward. And after 50 years, I'm very pleased. I have no regrets. I had a great time. I met some wonderful people. And I think that's what you'll miss is some of the people that you had long-term relationships with. After the councilman is termed out in June, he says he'd like to take some time off, but hopes to remain active in public life by sitting on corporate boards. In the Crenshaw District, Gil Reyes for LA This Week. As LAPD Chief Parks created the first cold case unit in the nation, this led to the arrest of grim sleeper suspect Lonnie Franklin Jr. after two decades on the run. Well, Rampart Village is in full spring bloom after dozens of volunteers recently completed the second phase of a beautification project. With shovels in hand, these volunteers and residents are spending their Saturday working hard, planting birds of paradise and roses on medians in Rampart Village along Occidental Boulevard between Beverly and 3rd Street. Councilmember Mitchell Farrell was right in the middle of the action. We volunteer to improve our neighborhoods. Local residents become more vested in the success and continued success and momentum of making our neighborhoods uh, you know, feel better, uh, improving the look and feel. More than 60 people, including students, community members, and the Department of Recreation and Parks turned out for the event. It's a really great collaboration from many organizations, and that's really what it takes to transform a neighborhood. Mayor Eric Garcetti also helped out and showed off his planting skills. Bird of Paradise, this is the city flower, and the mayor is planting the city flower. How cool is that? But the most important block is your block, where you live, where you work, to come out to beautify. Uh, every single day when you come out your front door, that block that means the most to you. Councilmember Mitchell Farrell says the parkway has long been used for dumping bulky items and other trash, but hopefully that will change with the new transformation as a much more beautiful street begins to emerge. The council member is also encouraging community members and groups to get involved and take proactive steps to improve their own neighborhoods because together, he says, they can make great things happen in their own backyards. A Los Angeles City Park is back in business after a major facelift. City residents get their feet wet on how to conserve water and brown is the new green at LAFD fire stations. All these stories and more in City Beat. The L.A. City Council gave final approval to an ordinance that raises the minimum wage in Los Angeles to $15 an hour by 2020 for hundreds of thousands of workers. The council voted 12 to 1 to approve the wage hike ordinance, with Councilman Mitchell Englander casting the dissenting vote. 
The council gave it preliminary approval, but a second vote was necessary because the vote was not unanimous. Mayor Eric Garcetti is expected to sign the ordinance, which will make L.A. with 3.8 million residents the biggest in the country to have a $15 minimum wage. Outgoing council member Tom LaBonge and the Department of Recreation and Parks recently reopened the Harold A. Henry Park on Lucerne Avenue in L.A. Community activist and former city council president Harold A. Henry created this park in the early 1960s by combining two residential properties. This 1.6-acre park is now part of the Windsor Village Historic Preservation Zone. Improvements include renovations of the existing play pit, two new playgrounds for children, smart irrigation systems, landscaping, and new water fountains. Additional features include wheelchair-accessible paths that lead to the center plaza along with a shade structure over the pavilion. Councilmember Paul Krokorian and Assemblyman Adrian Nazarian recently joined LADWP for a water rebate event at LA Valley College, giving customers an opportunity to learn about water rebates and ways to save water, such as turf removal and other programs. I'm going to go home and calculate the square footage on my two little yard areas and then um, uh, go in and get the rebate. In diminished water supplies, we need to make make do with less. The Los Angeles Fire Department recently announced it has joined the statewide movement to conserve water by letting all green grass at its fire stations turn brown. LAFD spokesman Peter Sanders said that grass will no longer be watered at fire stations. Instead, the LAFD is working with the city and community groups to develop a turf replacement program for all fire stations over the next three years. To date, 55 fire stations feature drought-tolerant landscaping, artificial turf, or no grass whatsoever. LAFD Chief Ralph Terraza said that the department will undertake all possible measures to conserve water and are proud to stand with Angelinos in declaring that brown is the new green. Expected rain and cold temperatures weren't enough to stop thousands of L.A. students from enjoying a recent day at the beach. As Gil Reyes reports, the children spent the morning picking up litter on Kids' Ocean Day. Light rain that became heavier as the morning wore on didn't stop busloads of kids from heading to Playa del Rey. On this massive one-day cleanup effort, the kids found... Lots and lots of tar and lots of plastic, bottle caps... And cigarettes. And cigarettes. And are you surprised how much you found? Yes. Like you didn't think you were going to find that much, right? Yes, I didn't know I was going to find that much. Because when I was on the bus, it looks like there was no trash. And it's everywhere, huh? Yeah, it is. Not rain, nor sleet, nor snow is going to stop these kids from being on the go, specifically cleaning up Dockweiler State Beach on Kids' Ocean Day, a culmination of a year's worth of education on the dangers of pollution and litter in our oceans and putting those lessons to good use. This goes to the ocean, but if we pick it up, it'll, it'll be okay because it won't go to the ocean and it won't harm other animals. Very good. And then, do you know the difference between the blue bins and the black bins? Yes, the black bins are for trash and the blue bins are recycling. These kids know what's up. About 3,500 students and their teachers throughout LA Unified took part in the effort organized by the Malibu Foundation. The LA Board of Public Works asked the children to spread their message about the beach and the streets. To be the ambassadors for how important it is when you go home to your communities, to your neighborhoods, to make sure that we keep our streets clean. For the benefit of future generations. In Playa del Rey, Gil Reyes for LA This Week. Luckily, most of the cleanup was over by the time the heavy rain arrived. Well, we all know that there's nothing cuter than a puppy, right? But wait till you see the LA Zoo's new baby goats. That's the focus of This Week in Tweets. In celebration of the four Nigerian dwarf goats' first day out in the public, the L.A. Zoo placed a GoPro in their yard. And what ensued was a display of hilarity and acrobatics. The three black and white baby goats and a brown one put on quite a show, jumping, bouncing, running, playing, and simply being super cute. The zoo tweeted, We put a GoPro in with our four two-week-old Nigerian dwarf goat babies. So much fun. The zoo in Memphis couldn't resist retweeting the post, commenting, absolutely adorable, we kid you not. As if the video wasn't cute enough, the zoo posted another heartwarming pic of Mama Goat cuddling with one of her babies, all in an effort to draw more folks to the zoo. 
The posting read, come visit our four baby Nigerian dwarf goats. A zoo fan, Kayla's Keeper, retweeted the post writing, this made me smile. Seriously, too cute for words. And that's a look at This Week in Tweets. Picnicking by the sea, movies under the stars, and music at the park. All this in this week's Things to Do. What better chance to bring your picnic basket, pack a few warm blankets, and enjoy a spirited performance of words from Shakespeare? The 18th season of Shakespeare by the Sea will feature productions of As You Like It and The Tempest at more than a dozen locations spread over Los Angeles and Orange County beginning on June 18th and concluding on August 22nd. While all performances are free to the public, donations are heartily encouraged. Most of all, regardless of what you can pay, make sure to enjoy the shows. The performance of As You Like It takes place on Saturday, June 20th at Point Furman Park, located at 807 West Paseo del Mar in San Pedro. For more information, visit ShakespeareByTheSea.org. And if you prefer something more whimsical, swing on over to the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, which is screening several movies under the stars this summer. On Saturday, June 20th, catch the classic film The Wizard of Oz with Dorothy, Toto, The Wicked Witch, and the rest of the Munchkins. The summertime screenings feature pre-show DJs, themed photo booths, and of course, plenty of room to picnic before the film starts. Plus, you know you're watching a movie in a giant cemetery that's also a Los Angeles landmark. The Hollywood Cemetery is located at 6000 Santa Monica Boulevard. The movie starts at 9 p.m. For more details, visit cinespia.org. And celebrating its 40th anniversary this year, concerts on the green in Warner Park return on Sunday, June 7th with the first World Music and Arts Festival. On Sunday, June 21st, enjoy the music of the DSB Band, which has been highly revered as the next best thing to journey. the lush signature sound of renowned vocalist Steve Perry and Journey in their prime. Complete with a band of world-class Los Angeles musicians, DSB remains true to Journey's musical legacy and delivers the nostalgic concert experience that will keep you believing. All concerts start at 6 p.m. and end at 8 p.m. There's plenty of room for a late afternoon picnic with the family while being entertained by headline performers. Concerts on the green are held at the Lou Bredlow Pavilion in Warner Park at 5800 Topanga Canyon Boulevard in Woodland Hills. For more, visit valleycultural.org. And that's a look at some things to do. Well, that's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kay. And from all of us here at LA This Week, thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week. from Chatsworth, offering you a taste of New Orleans since 1986. You're watching LA City View, Channel 35. Our city, our channel.
If you're in your offices, please report to the council chamber.
Good morning. Good morning. Today's date is Friday, June 19th. I'd like to welcome you to your Los Angeles City Council meeting. This meeting, this council meets every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. The public is welcome. Madam Clerk, I believe we have a quorum. Could you please call the roll? Blumenfeld, Bonne, Buscaino, Cedillo, Englander, Fuentes, Wizard, Caress, Recoyne, LaBange, Martinez, O'Farrell, Parks, Price, Weston, 10 members present, a quorum, Mr. President. First order of business. Approval of the minutes. Englander moves, Buscaino seconds, next. Committed to resolutions for approval. O'Farrell moves, Price seconds, next. Mr. President, there's a request from member to continue item 1K to July 28th and to refer item 11 to the Rules, Elections, and Intergovernment Relations Committee. So without objection, that'll be the order. Item 1 is an item notes for public hearing. The Department of Building and Safety reports that items 1D and F may be received and filed in as much as the liens have been paid. Item 1J may be received and filed in as much as the property is an owner-occupied single-family dwelling and exempt from lien. And the lien amount for item 1L should be reduced to $22,541.33 due to receipt of partial payment. Okay, so without objection, that'll be the... The order, do we have cards on these items? Yes, there are cards. Okay, let's move on. Items two through six are items for which public hearings have been held. Okay, uh, members on two through six. Mr. Fuentes. Mr. President, I'm sorry. If we could continue item 1J for two weeks. So do we need to, uh, we can just, what, what's I the best way to deal with that? Item 1J was uh, received and filed um, in as much as the lien has, the lien is exempt, it is exempt from lien processing. Oh, okay. So then he's fine with that. And uh, I've, I've just, it, hell, a bird whispered in my ear, 1L to July, I thought we already did that one to July 28th, didn't we? Or did we? No, um, L was just, uh, the lien amount was reduced. But we can also continue that to July 28th as Let's well. Let's do that. Okay, so now, members, any specials? I don't see any on items two through six. So, Madam Clerk, would you please open the roll? Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Okay, that's, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get used to that voice yet. It's going to take a while. Uh, can we move to seven, item seven? Through 11. Items 7 through 11 are items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes required for consideration. Mr. Wizar. Mr. President, item number three, forthwith, please. Okay, without objection. Now, again, what did you say, Madam Clerk? Items 7 through 11 are items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes required for consideration. Okay, so without objection, those items are now before this body. Do we have cards? Yes, cards on all items. Okay, then we'll hold those items, and that brings us where? Mr. President, that brings counsel to presentations or items called special. Okay, so before so before we uh, begin the presentation portion of today's uh, council, uh, you know, many all of us woke up to a horrific tragedy yesterday in the city of of Charleston, and at this point in time, I would like to request that all in this chambers, please rise for a moment of silence. Nine people lost their lives in Bible study. You think of going to church, you think of safety, you think of sanctuary. And uh, trust me, all of the nine had plans for today and tomorrow. Who, who would think that... Uh, anyone would do anything as horrific as this, the least we can do is give them a moment of silence. So starting from this moment. Thank you all. Please be seated. President. Yes, Mr. And, Wiesel. And may I add, um, I... Uh, had the pleasure of uh, studying one summer back east with one of the individuals uh, that was killed. Uh, he was a senator, 
uh, for the state, um, Clementa Pickney, and he uh, was just a real compassionate, caring person, uh, became a pastor at a very young age, and his love of others, his love of public service showed, and he was just a great speaker, someone who moved people, and someone who I think was on this earth for the short time that he was to serve others. He felt that was his calling. It's just a, a real tragedy to see such a wonderful person like him uh, be killed in such a shameless, um, unconscionable way, a real true hero uh, in this country. And so I ask that we also keep him in our prayers and his family and all the others that passed that day. Thank you. And at the end of today's meeting, we will make sure that we adjourn in the memory of all of those that were lost uh, this past Wednesday. So with that said, we're going to begin with our uh, presentation portion of uh, today's agenda, and we want to start off on a, I think, a very a happy note. And I'm going to ask Mr. Buscaino to take the center aisle. Mr. Buscaino, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. It's, uh, we just returned from an amazing reception in the mayor's office celebrating the great success of Operation Progress in Watts, California. Let's give them a round of applause and a warm L.A. City Hall welcome. In the community of Watts, only 33 percent of residents have a high school diploma. Less than 3% of residents have a four-year degree. In Nickerson Gardens in Watts, the high school graduation rate is only 10%. I believe there's uh, so much more important work to do, and there's no more important work than being able to help a young person in Watts develop the skills, and throughout the city, develop the skills that they need to succeed, especially when they are faced with uh, the challenges of growing up in a tough environment. Fifteen years ago, a small group of LAPD officers from Southeast Division wanted to make a difference. Led by uh, San Pedro's own John, Officer John Coughlin, they founded a nonprofit called Operation Progress. The mission was simple, to provide aid to the group of, of children who were making the right decisions, uh, support good kids in a challenging environment, uh, to mentor at-risk youth, keep them out of gang life, and raise scholarship funds to send them to private school. The officers did much of the work on their own time and on their own resources. And it worked. Clearly it worked. Their handful of scholars succeeded. Soon fellow officers noticed, family members noticed, the schools noticed, the community definitely took note of the uh, success and civic leaders embraced and supported Operation Progress. In 2013, the modest dream of Operation Progress expanded into an amazing ecosystem of opportunity that over the next decade will guide more than 300 young people in Watts from elementary school through college education, due largely in part of the support of the Caruso Foundation. And I'm here today to honor uh, we are here today to honor Operation Progress, their scholars, their LAPD mentors, and all of the partners who make this unique ecosystem such a success. I'm also joined uh, by Commissioner Kevin James, one of Operation Progress board members, um, who uh, is also here. Let's give our commissioner a round of applause. Thank you, Commissioner, for your guidance and your commitment. A number of the uh, board members, including the Robinson family, thank you so much for your ongoing support and dedication. But I do want to take a moment, colleagues, to, to share briefly with you how this partnership works. Now, um, the Operation Progress is blessed with a partnership that includes the LAPD, St. Lawrence uh, Elementary School, Vermin Days Boys High School. Uh, St. Mary's uh, Academy Girls High School, Strive, an after-school tr 
after school tutoring program, helping young people excel, otherwise known as HYPE, which prepares the highest performing students to attend LA's elite private schools, and South Central Scholars, one of the finest college scholarship and mentoring programs anywhere in this country. Any second or third grade student in Watts can apply to become an OP scholar. It's a rigorous process that requires the commitment of both the student and their caregivers. Every scholar is required to maintain a 3.0 GPA and satisfy the program's 10 pillars of success. Now, they begin their education at St. Lawrence Elementary School. The majority move on to Vermin Day or St. Mary's for high school. In sixth and seventh grade, the highest performing scholars enter the HYPE program and attend schools like Harvard, Westlake, Brentwood, and Loyola on full scholarship. And this program is literally changing Watts uh, for the better by setting an example for their families and, f and friends, breaking down ethnic barriers, and giving back the service uh, through their service to the community. And I'm joined here today by more than 100 family members of Operation Progress. I want to um, first acknowledge our LAPD mentors who not only play a personal role in each scholar's life, but whose work in Watts has also replaced tension and suspicion with collaboration and trust. And what I said earlier in the reception, I challenge anyone in this country who questions uh, the police relationships with our community to come explore and see the success of Operation Progress here in the city of Los Angeles. I've said this before, LAPD's real power doesn't come just by pulling people over and arresting our way out of the problem, but rather their real power is in giving people the permission to take back their streets in their local neighborhoods. And I want to acknowledge, as I mentioned before, uh, Caruso-affiliated mentors who have adopted these students in, uh, in their own families, and also uh, to give um, a shout out to the parents who have also embraced uh, this program. I also want to acknowledge uh, the educators from St. Lawrence, Furman Day, and St. Mary's Academy who are providing a safe and vi rigorous academic environment. Um, a number of uh, those who are a part of STRIVE, helping people excel, and South Central Scholars for taking these kids to another level. I uh, also want to acknowledge Tina and Rick Caruso, Steve Robinson, and Janet Crown, who have committed millions of dollars to OP over the next decade. Let's give them a round of applause. It's a great partnership. Also, we cannot forget the parents, the caregivers, and family members that are determined to support their child's success. I also want to acknowledge the Board of Directors, our very own Commissioner Kevin James is one of them as well, and Executive Director Teresa Gartland as well. Give them a round of applause. I also want to um, recognize Mayor Garcetti for also embracing and supporting uh, this program. He will soon meet with our scholars and uh, the, our guests here today. Um, finally, most importantly, I want to acknowledge uh, over 60 scholars in the OP ecosystem, most of them who are here today. Uh, they are why we are standing here today. Every single day, these scholars persevere through hard work and constant determination. They inspire us to do better and better. Uh, they are just simply amazing. I had an opportunity to meet with them earlier. Now I want to introduce a couple scholars so you can hear from our next generation of LA leaders. Um, please help me welcome Robert Turner. Good, yeah. Come to my heart. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Robert. Good Turner. morning to you. Every he said good morning. <laughs> Everybody say good morning. My name is Robert Turner, and I am eighth grade at St. Lawrence Urban DC Catholic School. Operation Progress has given me the opportunity to attend St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence is a great school, good environment, and positive people. It also has taught me manners and how to adjust to the environment around you. Operation Progress is good for me because the LA men LAPD mentors is always helping. My mentor is Officer Love, and he is the greatest mentor ever. 
He always makes sure everything is good for me and he cares for me. He is like an uncle to me because he cares and I know I care for him. Uh, I would like to thank Operation Progress because I know I will graduate and make my family proud. All right. Well, Mr. President, with that name, Officer Love, you just can't go wrong, right? <laughs> Thank you, sir. I love you. Um, next, you'll hear from Jennifer Alvarado, uh, also an OP scholar. Jennifer. <clears throat> Loud and clear. All right. Good morning. My name is Jennifer Alvarado, and I am a junior at St. Mary's Academy. I feel blessed to be part of Operation Progress. It has provided all of us abundant joy through many ways such as having great mentors to look up to that not only encourage us but empower us to do our very best in school and never give up. Also, having adventuresome field trips that helps us explore Los Angeles, and for some of us, having the opportunity to go to Kenya next month. Being raised in the Watts community where gangs, violence, and poverty flourish can be a difficult task for anybody that wants to be successful in life. But as Operation Progress scholars, we are fortunate enough to receive a great quality of education where the environment feels safe, and it motivates me to not only grow my academics, but also in my faith. Though some of the classes we take have high standards and demand a lot of studying, it makes the pathway to college clear. It is a stepping stone to what's next. We are also to make, excuse me, we are also able to make a difference in our communities by giving it a better reputation. I believe that Operation Progress has planted a seed in all of us, which will enable us to prosper and achieve our goals if we set our minds and hearts to it. Thank you, and God bless you all. Good job, sweetie. Good job. Good job, sweetie. If we can, um, please help me welcome uh, one of the parents who supports Operation Progress, Gloria Gutierrez, to say a few words. Hey, my, name is, my name is Gloria Gutierrez, and I'm a proud parent of an OP scholar for four years now. As a parent, you want the best for your children, and finding that perfect school or teacher is impossible. Operation Progress has given me peace of mind. When I drop my child off at school, I know that he is safe and he's receiving a good education. There are officers checking in on him and encouraging him to do his best. And that makes my child want to put in the effort so not to disappoint anyone. For that reason, I am very grateful. All right. Thank you so much, Gloria. Good job, you. Good job. And uh, help me welcome Andy McKnight, another parent who uh, has her arms braced around, um, wrapped around Operation Progress. Annie. Hi, I'm an OP parent. This is my first year. I love the program. Teresa and Vanessa are the best. I came through OP under Officer Goosby and Officer Hollyman. Not only are they my kids mentors, they're also their football coaches. They play Pop Warner football for the Watts Bears. Mm -hmm. And Jamel and Kiwan loves the program. I love the people in the program. That's it. All right. Thank you. Well, let's hear it for Watts Bears. Watts, Watts Bears was highlighted on a, a recent HBO special with uh, Brian Gumbel. It was an amazing piece. Um, I want to recognize, of course, my brothers and sisters in law enforcement, LAPD mentors, um, who really... It really takes a team, and recently a number of LAPD's elite, num elite runners represented the city of Los Angeles and the uh, LAPD in racing for, some, uh, for the cause of Operation Progress. I want to recognize the runners, officers Scott Linkford, Amanda Linkford, Tim Colomy, Brian Dameworth, and Ish Contreras. Give them a round of applause. Right now. And to say a few words on behalf of the LAPD is Officer Gooseby. Thank you. 
Good morning. On behalf of the Operation Progress Mentors, I want to say thank you for having us. Mark Boyer said, the best help we can offer the youth of today is to prepare them for tomorrow. As an Operation Pro Progress Mentor, those words are ingrained in my head. It is truly an honor to be amongst these future leaders and to know I've made an impact on the future of Watts. Being a mentor has allowed me to teach, but more importantly, to learn and see that no matter what goes on in the world today, with these OP scholars, our future is very bright. Thank right. you. Thank you. I would uh, like to ask um, the executive director, Teresa Gartland, to say a few words. She'll be followed by Officer Coughlin and then Rick Caruso. Teresa, you want to You say know that? what, uh, Joey, Mr. Yes. Buscaino? Joey B is fine. I okay. still love you. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to ask uh, Member Englander to say sure. a few words, and then Mr. LaBange. Mitchell? Thank you, Mr. President. And um, I got to tell you, I went to sleep last night very upset and angry over what happened in South Carolina. And I'm, I think it was very fitting that we opened with a moment of silence, that those kinds of terrorists attacks, and I call that a terrorist attack, can happen today on our soil, and that people are so still divisive in this country. And then I wake up this morning to this presentation with Operation Progress, and uh, Joe, with your partnership with Teresa and Hype and Maylee and Sarah that created it, and, um, and Rick and Janet and Steve and LAPD and these scholars, it gives new hope. Yes. And what you've done and continue to do to set the bar even higher, to give people an opportunity to bring the government, wow, the government, um, the private sector, the public sector, and nonprofits together to make a difference in very difficult communities to be raised in today here in our communities. It reminds me of a story of a scholar that he was leading his young children. And he said, follow me to the edge of the cliff. And they said, we're scared of heights. We're not going to go. He said, but trust me and follow me to the edge of the cliff, and I will show you a new opportunity. And reluctantly, they, they went. Scared, they followed. And he brought them to the edge of the cliff, and then he pushed them off. But they didn't fall, they flew. You've been giving an opportunity to let our young kids fly and soar and reach new heights. And it's incredible, and it's truly um, a miracle and what you're creating here for an opportunity that otherwise wouldn't exist. My hat goes off to all of you, particularly our Los Angeles police officers that go above and beyond the badge each and every day in this community to make an indifference, to inspire others, to bring everybody collaboratively, collaboratively together, and, uh, and I'm in awe. So thank you, thank you. so much. <laughs> Mr. LaBange. I love Los Angeles and I love Watts and I love the LAPD and I love young children who find a way. You know, the greatest athlete ever known in the world got his bike stolen in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. And he went to the police department and he was like 14 years old and he said, hey, they stole my bike, I want to go beat up the guy who stole my bike. And the police sergeant at the desk said, you go downstairs and you get in the police athletic league. And that was Cassius Clay, believe it or not. The police department who became Muhammad Ali. So impressive. All these young people. The joy that you're giving them in life is so important. And I see the public works commissioner you noted and his help in all this as well. Mr. James, thank you. But Mr. Buscaino, you who've done such a wonderful job, I just have one little there. I see a man in uniform back there, I think. And I wanted to make sure you called him up here because I'll have trouble on Sunday if I if I run into him. Father Mike, please come up right now. And the reason why I call Father Mike, Father Mike, he used to work Hollywood Division. Get up here, Father Mike. Get up here. Get him up. Get, officer, bring him up here right now. He worked in Hollywood. And you know what the work he did, Mr. O'Farrell? Father Mike at Blessed Sacrament. And now he's in Watson doing great work. Father, just take another 30 seconds of my time and say something more important than I have said. Please. Thank you, Mr. Lavange. Uh, this is a wonderful uh, 
partnership that we have, and it's a mentorship program that's so unique because of the participation of LAPD and because of the leadership of so many good people. I just want to thank you, the council, thank the city of Los Angeles, and let's make this world a better place for these kids. That's thank right. you all. If I can, thank you. I'll have Teresa say a few words, and uh, Mr. Caruso, if Rick can say a few words as well, then we'll wrap it up. Good morning, Council. I'm Teresa Garland, Executive Director of Operation Progress. I want to thank you for having us today. Um, I've been working in Watts for the past 12 years in education nonprofits, and I joined on with Operation Progress because it truly embodied what the neighborhood was lacking. An organization that saw the kids all the way from third grade through college graduation through partnerships. And I always say our success is due to the students and the mentors. And it's been incredible to watch our students thrive in such adversity. And these mentors give so much of their time and resources to these kids. And so I want to say thank you for honoring them because they are the true heroes of the community. Thank you, Teresa. And Help if me. we could call up our dear friend, Rick Caruso, ladies yes, and gentlemen. Yes, an angel in the city of Angels. Yes, he is. Continues to give an amazing heart. Thank you. Rick, good to see you. I, 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 love you. I love you. He wasn't supposed to do this, Mr. President, members of the council. <laughs> I want to tell you, Tina and I just feel very blessed and fortunate that we get to support these kids. Because today, it's all about the parents. It's about LAPD. That's the finest police force in this country. And it's about the young men and women in South LA that are leading this city in the future. So I just feel honored. I feel humbled. And I am so proud to be a part of this organization. Thank you very much. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Thank you so very much. The humbled Rick Caruso. Thanks, Rick. And lastly, to, uh, to land this plane, as you often say, Mr. President, our Commissioner Kevin James. Only quickly to mention, because our council member did not, council member Joe Buscano is directly involved in this organization. He is on our board as well as a, one of our advisors, and he didn't mention that earlier. Thanks. Thanks so much. Yes. Joey B. Give it up for Joey B. Thanks. So with that, on behalf of the... Uh, City of Los Angeles and CD15, we're so blessed to have this public-private partnership uh, with Operation Progress. We are saving lives and watch. Thank you so much. Congratulations. We absolutely love you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, you yeah, we'll do a quick group. Uh, then we'll go in the back. All right, guys, get in here. Come on. Together, 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 together. You, why don't you hold it, bud? Here. Why don't you hold it? Yeah. Hold it up. We want to see your face, though. There we go. Let's give it to you so you can see. Thank you so much, colleagues. Thank you. Thank you again. Give them a round of applause. Uh, before we go to our next presentation, uh, Mr. O'Farrell, for a quick uh, intro, I think. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes. Um, I would like the organizers of Make Music LA to please stand. All right, let's give them a round of applause. Colleagues, this Sunday is the fourth annual Make Music LA. I'd like to especially highlight our friend Dorsey Dujon for founding this for the Los Angeles a number of years ago. June 21st is the day for 11 hours. There will be live, free music performances in our parks, in our plazas, on our sidewalks, across the city, private businesses. It's getting bigger and better every year. It's a wonderful artistic exchange, and Dorsey has led the charge in Los Angeles all these years. It started in this country, in New York, 10 years ago, Chicago, five years ago, and the idea is from France's Fête de la Musique, a national holiday inaugurated in 1982 that has become an international movement of music and artistic expression. Uh, for information where you can actually see these free concerts in the city, go to makemusicla.org. And what I'll be doing in the back room is presenting this certificate to these organizers 
for giving us this wonderful cultural gift four years in the running. It's going to be better than ever. I encourage all Angelinos to head out on Sunday, Father's Day. After you take your dad out for a meal, go listen to some wonderful music in our parks and in our public rights of way, in our businesses, in our plazas. Make Music LA, Sunday, June 21st. Enjoy, and thank you again. Thank you, Mr. O'Farrell. Thank you. Mr. Weezar, we're going to let clear out the chambers, but you may want to work your way up to the center aisle. Your presentation will be next. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Let's let it get a little quieter. Sure. Well deserved noise, I may add. Well, colleagues, uh, today I am pleased to welcome and honor a great democratic organization in California. It's called Emerge California. Emerge California was formed in 2002 by a group of Democratic women in the Bay Area who believed the Democratic Party needed greater female representation at all levels of public office. The organization's mission is to identify, train, and encourage women to run for office, get elected, and to seek higher office. Until this year, Emerge California has been located only in Northern California, but in 2015, the inaugural Southern California program was launched and 19 women from the Southland from San Diego to Santa Barbara were selected to participate and tomorrow they graduate even before Emerge came to Southern California this year some Emerge alumni have come from the ranks of LA City Hall including Carolyn Ramsey and Becca Dutton who's here as well yeah. City Hall alumni as well this year, two hit City Hall staffers were among the 19 women trained by the inaugural Southern California Emerge, both from my office, uh, Jessica Wellington McLean and Sarah Hernandez. The program challenges the participants to determine where they might fit in the political landscape and to examine what it really takes to run for office. I believe we have a better government when we have more balanced conversations and debates about the policies we're considering and it's incumbent upon those of us, especially men, who have been fortunate enough to be elected to office to be part of the change. At this moment, I'd like to take a little sidetrack and introduce a few other young women who are part of Girls Who Code, who are also seeking to not only learn more about the government structure here in LA, but also to get into the tech and STEM fields. Uh, I want to introduce to you uh, 20 high school students who are part of a great organization called Girls Who Code, which is a nationwide program that aims to close the gender gap in the technology and engineering sectors. Can you please stand up? And let's oh, give them a big round right. of applause. With support from the public and private partners, particularly AT&T, Girls Who Code works to educate, inspire, and equip high school girls with the skills and resources to empower them to pursue careers in technology and engineering. And six out of the 20 girls in this year's program are from the city of Los Angeles. Now, we are also fortunate to have an organization like Emerge California. The unfortunate news, as we all know, is that we only have one woman on the city council. Uh, Nuri Martinez, unfortunately, cannot be with us today, uh, but we are fortunate that we have such a strong person, uh, councilwoman like Nuri, to keep raising these yes, issues and the importance of more gender balance on this city council. Uh, another uh, person who uh, is a strong advocate uh, and continues to raise issues of gender equality on the city council and throughout politics is our good friend Mike Bonin. Councilmember Bonin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Wiesart. Colleagues, I am absolutely delighted. Hold, hold on, Mr. Bonin. Mr. Herman, sit down. You're not part of this women's organization. At least show respect for them. Okay, sit down and show some respect for these young ladies. Mr. Bonin. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you for that in particular. Uh, I'm absolutely delighted to, to be here today uh, to stand here and to uh, honor Emerge, the organization, and to congratulate and celebrate all of these women who are graduating from Emerge's class uh, and look forward to the promise uh, that they hold and the potential that they have to join us in elective office and help make progressive change here in Los Angeles and throughout the state of California. You know, a month ago, or a few weeks ago when Mr. O'Farrell and I stood here for LGBT Heritage Month, I talked about how important it was that, that all members of the progressive movement, all the different branches, join together and support each other uh, in our march for equality and our march for progress. As a, as a gay man, I have been extremely lucky to have benefited from all of the strides and all of the advances of the women's equality movement. And it's incumbent upon the LGBT community to stand up very strongly, not just for, for lesbians, but for all women, to make sure that we clear the pipelines so that they can make it into elective office. The thing that is amazing about Emerge is that they train these candidates in every aspect of running for office, from fundraising to organizing to getting their message out. Uh, so that they can be the best and the strongest candidates when they decide to step into the arena. Uh, and I know that all of them are planning to do so. Uh, three of them, I think, are, at I think three of them are my constituents, so I hope that uh, uh, they, they're looking at other offices, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's particularly uh, good to be here with them. Uh, I've managed to, to be at a number of Emerge events. I have a, a bit of a family connection in a way to Emerge. Uh, David Graham Casso's, my communication director's wife, Lindsay Bubar, is with us here today. She has uh, brought me into the Emerge fold. She is their Southern California program director and is one of the real engines of this organization here. And uh, it is just uh, so good to be with them today. And I want to congratulate all of the, the folks who are graduating tomorrow. Thank you. All right. Congratulations. Thank you, Councilmember Bonin. And as uh, Councilmember Bonin mentioned, Lindsay Bubar serves as the Southern California program director for Emerge California. She's an LA-based political consultant who has served as a campaign manager for candidates for state assembly, state senate, city council, and Congress, including the legendary Congress member Henry Waxman. Uh, working to ensure we have full gender equality in politics, Lindsay has served as the president and vice president of Politi Pol political action for the National Women's Political Caucus, LA West Side, and on the advisory board of Running Start, an organization dedicated to bringing young women into politics. And as Councilmember Bonin mentioned, uh, she has a strong connection to city council. She is married to David Graham Castle in his office. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Linda Bubar. You know Lindsay what, Bubar. You know what, Mr. Wiesar, if, if I could just say, please come forward, but if I could just say this. The organization started in or around 2002. I was Speaker of the California State Assembly at that time, and I was one of the first electeds that the organization met with up in uh, Sacramento. So I'm very excited and proud to see you growing and expanding. And um, the, this council, is the we're so progressive, we want to do everything that we can to make sure that you succeed. That life is about balance, and that's what we need to try to strive here. So thank you for all of the works that you've done and all of the work that you're going to do. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much to Council Members Bonin and Wiesar and Martinez, who can't be here today for this honor. It's really special to be here with all of you today because of your early support of the Southern California program. Even though she can't be here, I want to um, give a special thank you to Council Member Martinez, who literally helped us launch the Southern California program by serving as our keynote speaker for our very first house party here. Since then, she's been an invaluable partner, speaking at many events, serving as a trainer for our first LA training, and at every opportunity, elevating the issue of electing more women to public office. <clears throat> Council Member Bonin also spoke at one of our very first Southern California events, served as a trainer at one of our first LA trainings, and he and his husband, Sean, personally supported one of our first LA fundraisers. He has always remained dedicated to mentoring and supporting women on his staff and in the community, who are interested in engaging in, in the political process. 
and Councilmember Wiesar, one of our first, one of our largest sponsors at our annual event last fall, and has encouraged and supported two of his own staff members, Sarah Hernandez and Jessica Weathington McLean, to become part of our inaugural Southern California program. I also want to briefly thank the other council members and council staff who have been so supportive of our efforts, including Connie Yanos from Councilmember Price's office and David Graham Casso, who's been mentioned several times now, Ooh. from Councilmember <laughs> Bodden's office, who served as our messaging and press trainers, as well as Martha Garcia from Councilmember Bonin's office, who, uh, whose help allowed us to host our final Southern California training and graduation here in City Hall tomorrow. As has already been said, you don't need to look beyond this horseshoe to understand why Emerge's expansion into Southern California is so important. Women are grossly underrepresented in elected office, and in fact, we are heading in the wrong direction. At one point, there were five women on this city council. At the state level, women once made up 31% of the state legislature, and today we are down to 25%. For us, though, this is much more than just about parity. Women bring a unique perspective, life experience, and approach to governing that is critical to the conversation and is currently missing at so many decision-making tables. Emerge is here to train that by recruiting and training women to run for office. We have trained more than 300 women statewide. Half have already run for office or been appointed to office. And of those who have run, nearly 70% have won. Thank you to our program members, alums, and board members who are here today and make this important work possible. Thank you to the women who have stepped up and run for office. And thank you to those of you already in elected office who take the issue of electing women seriously. We need all of you on our side to tackle this issue and look forward to partnering with you for years to come. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Lindsay. And next is a 2015 Emerge Program member who has been by my side for eight and a half years. Uh, Jessica Wellington McLean runs my Bringing Back Broadway initiative. Uh, she helped launch it with me back in 2008. She is my lead on the streetcar project, handles economic development policy, and manages commercial and hotel development in downtown LA, which you know is no small feat. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Jessica Wellington McLean. Yay! <laughs> I'll let you touch the belly later. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Councilmember Wiesar. It is truly an honor to be here, and it's a little odd to be on this side of the podium. My hands are shaking a little. Um, I've, I've uh, waddled through this building uh, through two babies now, and, and it's been interesting to be in the program during this because one of the things that the Emerge program does for me and all of my Emerge sisters is kind of challenge you to say, what do you want to do and why do you want to do it? And what I want to do is light a spark and a change for betterment in the world, right? That's what we all want to do, but why do we want to do it? And for me, the answer was, it's a girl. We are living in the first time in generations where it is not certain that my girls, I have a four-year-old and one on the way, are going to live a more empowered life than we inherited. Our generation grew up believing that we could do whatever we wanted to do, and rightfully so that may not be their reality. And that's why it's important to get women in the pipeline to change things, because especially the, the women's right to choose, the ability to create equal pay for equal work, those things are in jeopardy in our country right now. Um, and I don't want to leave that as the legacy for my girls. Um, it's, and, and the reason that that is is because predominantly the people making the laws are not the women that are affected by them. Uh, according to the Interparliamentary inter Union, uh, the United States ranks 73rd in the percentage of women in higher office, 73rd in the world. That's behind Mexico, China, Middle Eastern countries, Kenya. In California, only 25% of our legislators are women. And as a result, girls growing up today just might not have it even as well as we did. So politics as usual really must change. And part of that means putting yourself on the line, putting yourself out there and becoming part of the change. I'm proud to, to work for a boss who is part of the change, who has encouraged that and has given women leadership opportunities and has encouraged us to go even further. Um, but it's for the kids and it's for the girls and that's why I'm part of Emerge. I need to be part of the change. I need to be part of Emerge because it's a girl. <laughs> You're so impressive. Let's give her a round of applause. So impressive. 
Mr. President, uh, two more program speakers, and the next is also uh, a staff member of mine, uh, Sarah Hernandez, who serves as my downtown area director and special counsel. Uh, she grew up in Salinas, and uh, before attending Duke University, public policy. Policy studies. Uh, she joined after she uh, after that she joined Teach for America and taught sixth grade English and history at Johnny Cochran Middle School in Mid City, Los Angeles. She also started the nonprofit Hype, which is part of uh, Mr. Puscaino's program that uh, he just presented right now, which assists low income middle school students get admitted to college prep independent high schools in the area and go on to college. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Hernandez. Thank you. Thank you. I just really quickly want to acknowledge everyone around the horseshoe for supporting a program like this. Uh, through the past few decades, we have made um, remarkable strides in clearing that pipeline, as Councilmember Bonin has said, uh, to allow women to enter into various fields like uh, like the sciences, like technology, like, like the political sector. And I realized that yesterday while staffing my boss at committee and looking around the room and seeing um, almost all of the high level, level staffers in that room being women, and that's really extraordinary. Now, the, the pipeline we still need to clear is that leadership pipeline, and that's where we're, um, where we're falling short and where pro programs like Emerge are really, really, really important. And so I'm, I'm really thankful to be a part of this program. I want to thank Councilmember Bonin and Councilmember Martinez uh, for participating, and as well, Council President, thank you for being um, a pioneer in supporting this program. And most importantly, I want to thank my boss, who has time and time again, I've witnessed um, put himself on the line to support women who are running for office um, and I think it's you know what's really powerful to me is when he speaks about it he speaks about as Jessica talked talked about his his daughters and and the daughters of many people and, and allowing them to um, really have the opportunity that that we we hope that they they can have in the future so thank you so much Another program member is Nichelle Henderson. Uh, she is the wife of Gardena City Council member Mark Henderson, but the women in Emerge and many others see her as a dynamo in her own right, whose passion is protecting women's health and reproductive rights and preserving the environment. Please give a warm welcome to Nichelle Henderson. Good morning. Thank you, Councilman. My name is Nichelle Henderson. I'm a resident of the city of Gardena. But today I stand before you as an extremely proud member of the inaugural Southern California Emerge Class of 2015. Emerge California's commitment to only training Democratic women ensures that we have more Democratic, progressive-minded women, such as myself, have seats at the decision-making table. In the past seven months of training with Emerge, I have laughed, I have cried, I've learned. I've forged a bond of sisterhood and friendships with a group of like-minded women that who on, in their own rights individually will make a mark on the political landscape. I have been empowered with the knowledge to boldly protect and project my feminist voice, to advocate for other women and to be the change that I wish to see. And I have encouraged, I have been encouraged by the stories of dynamic, self-assured women such as Councilwoman Nuri Martinez to confidently put my Emerge training to practice. Most importantly, the Emerge training program has taught me to walk the talk and has dared me to dream a seemingly impossible dream of running for a political office and giving me the skills needed to be successful. For this, I thank our executive director, Kimberly Ellis, and Lindsay Bubar, our program coordinator, for bringing Emerge California to Southern California. And I thank the honorable members of the Los Angeles City Council for recognizing the importance of a training program such as Emerge and what it does for all of its participants. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, and before we give this uh, resolution signed by all the council members and our mayor uh, and our city clerk, and I'm looking who else, and our president, whose uh, name is way up there as well, um, I, I wanted to uh, ask some of the other participants to uh, also um, uh, briefly introduce yourselves and say your name and where you're from. If you could just uh, let us know who you are. Thank you. Hello. Could you get out of the center aisle? I'm Pauline Miranda. I'm coming from Fresno. I'm the first Emerge California woman to take the course in 2011. I graduated in... 2012. So it's my pleasure to be here with you. Thank you for having us here, and I hope you can support 
all the women from Los Angeles because we need to have more elected women. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning, Council. I am Cassandra Chase, and I am a resident in Diamond Bar, California. Thank you. We know, everybody knows you. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Becca Doughton, and uh, I live in Los Feliz and Councilmember Labonte's district, and have the opportunity to work for an awesome statewide elected official, State Controller Betty Yee, who also is a big supporter of the Emerge program and a wonderful leader in her own right. Thank you. All right. Good morning, I'm Janet Turner, and I have the great luck to be in the district with Mike Bonin as my council member, and I'm past president of Pacific Palisades Community Council. Wonderful. Good morning, I'm Erica Ferriston, also in Mike Bonin's district, proudly. <laughs> <Told ya. laughs> and I'm just a grateful member of Emerge and soon to be a graduate. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Good morning, Council. My name is Julie Stromberg. I'm from Larchmont. I'm in the Council District 4. Tom Labonge. Thank you, Councilman Tom Labonge, for everything you've done for us. I'm an attorney, and I'm also a community leader. I am a board member of the Greater Wilshire Neighborhood Council and a participant in this year's Southern California Emerge class. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Let's give them a round of applause. So, uh... I'd like to present this to Lindsay and uh, on behalf of the City of Los Angeles. Uh, congratulations on the inaugural class uh, in Southern California, and we look forward to seeing your names on the ballot in the near future. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, congratulations, and is there uh, leaving the center aisle uh, from your desk, uh, from your Okay, Mr. Labanche, for a, a quick introduction because I do have another presentation. You got it right now. Uh, I'm joined with uh, Mr. Go right Clark, ahead. Noreen Vincent from the city attorney's office. Noreen Vincent with the city attorney's office. Mr. Clark, the chief city attorney. We are special here with the American Bar Association Irish Externs Program. Say a few words real quick. Mr. President, uh, it's, it's great for our office to, to uh, welcome these students. This is the 25th year in which the Irish American Bar Association, of which I'm a proud member, uh, has welcomed these Irish students. Uh, they, they're from the best schools in Ireland, the best law schools in Ireland. They're at the very top of their classes. It is wonderful to share this experience with another nation that observes so, so assiduously the rule of law including most recently a nationwide plebiscite which affirmed marriage equality in Ireland, one of the very few countries that has done that in the world. So we welcome these people, uh, and we hope they have a great experience here. They've gone into great things before, and I'm sure these students will too. Thank you. Okay, well, welcome. Welcome, welcome. all. And I want you to hear them self-introductions because you love the way they talk, Herb. Good morning. Uh, my name is Sean Beatty, and I'm from the University of Limerick in Ireland. All right, good job, Sean. Hi, I'm Maeve Lavelle. I'm from University College Dublin. Dublin. Good morning, Council. I'm Hannah Eames from East University College, Cork. Hi, I'm Graham Reynolds from Trinity College. God bless the Irish. God bless America. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, and welcome, welcome. Mr. Englander. You guys are used to standing around and waiting for a long time, right? So come on up. Very patient. Very patient, yes. Come on up, come on up. Colleagues, I'd like your attention on this very special presentation. This is, this is a dream. It's a great day for Los Angeles when we claim that one of our schools and a group of our students from our own community is the best in America. It's an even greater day when we can say they did this four times in the last five years. Today, we congratulate students, coaches, and teachers, and parents from Granada Hills Charter High School on winning the National Academic Decathlon again. Yeah. Congratulations again. Again. 
I'm so proud of this amazing achievement by the brilliant kids of the Granada Hills Academic Decathlon team. Winning the National Academic Decathlon is truly remarkable. It's an achievement that these amazing young people will be able to carry with them for the rest of their lives. They have put in over 30,000 hours of hard work. They studied, they practiced up to 12 hours a day. They skipped winter and spring vacations. And knowing how great Granada Hills Charter High School students, teachers, leadership, and parents are, it should be no surprise that they did it again. When Granada Hills Charter won the national title back in 2011, that was when I was first elected, it was awesome because I was able to put out a street sign that will be there forever, right in front of the school. And now, putting up the fourth sign, we're going to have to start looking for additional street light poles as that continues to creep down to the sidewalk. We left a lot of space underneath just to ensure that, uh, that we can keep doing that. The reason this achievement is so important is that it sends a message to every student, parents, teachers, and our communities that working together, studying, persevering, kids can get a great education here in Los Angeles and they can achieve greatness. Granada Hills Charter High School is the largest charter school in the nation. Consistently ranks among the top schools in the region and under the exceptional leadership of our executive director, Brian Bauer, and its teachers and staff. I wanted to share some of the highlights with you from this year's Academica. Before I do that, I didn't realize this and didn't know it until they first won in 2011. I was shocked to hear that this is what they do. Did you know that each and every year they take students from A, B, and C grade levels. This is an even playing field nationally to compete. So you've got kids of all different backgrounds, demographics, areas, and grade levels competing at a level playing field. To come out first in the nation, to do that four out of the last five years, it's not like what we'd see in sports. It's not like what we see in other competitions. It's a level playing field each and every year. It's not just the best of the brightest, the cream of the crop, and those with the silver spoon. It's everyone at every level competing, and they've won four out of five years. In fact, they earned 53,592 points out of a possible 60,000 points. It's truly remarkable. They broke records. Uh, Irene Lee, who couldn't be here today, she's a senior. She tied LA Unified Decathlon individual record. She tied the record at 9,461.4 points out of 10,000. Natalie Gonzalez, a senior, earned a perfect, get this, a perfect 1,000 points in a competition this year for her speech on, well, the title was Potable Poop, Technology to Transform Human Waste to water. Our students are phenomenal at Granada, and our 2015 Academic Decathlon Team Championship, Peter, Irene, Fernando, Natalie, Janine, George, uh, Tani Tantai. Tantai, thank you very much. <laughs> Tantai, Jasmine, uh, Jihi, Josh, uh, Aisha, our coaches, Matthew and John and Rachel, they are a family. They've spent birthdays, they've spent vacations, evenings, and weekends to achieve this greatness. And so for that, uh, we thank them for once again shining for so many others. So I'd like to present a resolution on behalf of all of us, signed by all members of the City Council, including our Mayor, and including our Council President, Herb Wesson, and uh, to Marilyn and to Matt, and say thank you so much, congratulations. All right, let's give them a round of applause. Come on up, come on up. Come on, God, be respectful. All right, who wants to speak? All right. I guess I do.
Now we're going to go ahead and hear from, uh, from Matt as well and share some of the secrets behind the success. Please come forward. And good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Um, thank you for the recognition. And I'd like to especially thank Councilman Englander for his enthusiastic support of um, our academic decathlon team over the last several years. Um, I'll keep my comments pretty short. I'm not going to divulge any uh, secrets. Um, but uh, essentially... Give us know, one secret. One secret? I'll give you one secret is finding the right students. Uh, and okay. Over the last five years um, that we've appeared at the national competition, it's been because we found the right students to participate in decathlon. And the students that are behind me um, represent the best of Granada Hills Charter High School. And I think for me personally, this has been one of my favorite years as a coach. Um, the team really came together and functioned more as a family than just as you know an academic team. And for that, I thank them for their hard work and effort. It's uh, about 10 to 11 months of work to get to the national championship. And all along the way, they, they really pushed through all those 12-hour days um, with a lot of grace and a lot of intensity. And, and I just appreciate all of the hard work that they did. So thank you again very much. Um, we appreciate the recognition. One, 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 one more quick thing, uh, Mr. President. Who was the senior? Who graduated this year? I want to give it up for the class of 2015 because we have something in common. I too, they know this, I too am the class of 2015 at Granada. Uh, I was the honored to be uh, their commencement uh, uh, speech uh, keynote this year. And uh, they honored me with the first time they've ever done this with an honorary degree from Granada. I'm an officially a Highlander now. Good for you. And uh, so I'm class of 2015. I'm proud still to my, my roots at El Camino and being a conquistador, but now I'm an honorary official Highlander. So uh, I've joined the class of 2015. Thank you so much. Congratulations to you all, even our own Mitch Englander. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Hey, let me do this. We'll see you next year. That's right. There you go. There you go. All right. We're going to take you guys in the back now for some photos. So if you have personal belongings, go ahead and grab those. Okay, we're going to go now. That ends our presentation. Okay, stop the applause. Stop the applause. We're going to go take care of our business. We're on item eight. Mr. Previn, are you around? Mr. Previn, I don't see you. There, I see you. So when the center aisle clears out, we'll have Mr. Previn on item eight. Uh, thank you, President Wesson. It's Eric Previn um, from CD2. This is, of course, a CD8 um, matter, but one that I uh, support. It's for the NAACP Theater Awards, and I want to thank the council member from uh, that district. I believe it's Mr. Parks for... Uh, for bringing that forward. And I just have a minor note, it's not at all a criticism because I understand these things come quickly. But when you have a, um, when you have a uh, 15,000 to fund any aspect for a certain piece and then a, for another small piece, when you have a 50,000 to fund one piece, I think it would be also good, just in the interest of just transparency, to also publish the budget to avoid any perce perception that that money is uh, loose. But uh, this is great and thank you so much for doing it again. Cheers. Thank you. Let's prepare to vote on this item. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay, we'll go to item 7. Mr. Walsh. I think that's Mr. Herman. Mr. Hunt. Mr. Spindler. Mr. Walsh, item seven. And Mr. President, uh, while he's coming, um, there's requests to send item eight forthwith. Okay, then without objection. John Walsh, blogging at hollywoodhighlands.org or Jay Walsh Confidential, tweeting at Hollywood Dems. Uh, here is, what these are are the list of the bad boy or bad girl landlords. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six of them. What happened was the people at North Rampart uh, 
most of them are North Rampart, 11th Avenue, West Sierra Vista. They had problems. Their, their units were out of, out of code. They went to the landlord, the landlord said drop dead, but now we have something here in this city, which is fairly unique, is that you can complain to the, to the city, and then the city says to the landlord, you don't pay the rent, uh, they're not paying the rent to you anymore, Mr. Landlord. They're paying the rent to us until you fix the apartment up to code. Again, when you do a good job, I'm the first one to congratulate you, hollywoodhighlands.org. Thank you, Mr. Herman. Or Mr. Hunt, you're right there. You can come up. Come up. Followed by Mr. Herman. I want to say this about rent escrow. I think that we need to have some kind of control over rent escrow and that, uh, that it actually needs to be validated. But if it's an ordinance or something like that, 99% of the ordinances are unconstitutional. So please have your attorneys check to find out if this is legal or if this is not legal and does it stand any uh, constitutional challenges on this ordinance. I vote no on it. Thank you. Wayne Spindler. Yes, we have. Um, I, I thoroughly object to the way this is being done. B, C, D, and E are against the same property. This poor little apartment building. Five, four, one, two, three, four different case numbers for the same place. What did this guy do to, what did this owner do? He didn't donate to your campaign, is that what happened? He's gotta go for four different case numbers. The poor landlord. Oh, it's just horrible. 636 North Rampart Boulevard. It's coming much, much too late. Everybody had hoped that this would have been removed far, far sooner. But every time he goes and repairs something, here comes the building and safety people. And he didn't pay them off. So you got to pay them off when they come the first time. So when they go to 636 North Rampart, going back to the first case, you got to make arrangements to pay off the building inspector because if you don't, they're going to come back again and again and again. And those building inspectors, they got a lot of kids, a lot of kids out there with hungry mouths, you know, and they got to feed those families and those drug habits and all those trips they take to Vegas and those gambling habits. So you got to pay off the building inspectors. So make sure when the building inspector comes out, you make arrangements to pay off the bribe the first time so you don't wind up with three separate, four separate case numbers and all those attorney fees. Do a good thing. Give it to the building inspector instead of the lawyers. Mr. Herman. Mr. Speaker, I pass. Thank you. No other speakers on the queue. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Thank you. Item 9, called special by callers. Mr. Walsh. at hollywoodhighlands.org, Jay Walsh Confidential, tweeting at Hollywood Dems. This is, uh, this is the ridiculous. $10,000. You know how much sidewalk repairs we could have? It's going to the Herman Dog Park. I don't know. I hope that's our Mr. Herman. And it must be. Excuse so me, Sergeant. Sergeant. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Walsh. So they can provide exercise equipment for uh, for the dogs. So we live in a city where Ezel Ford is shot 
down like a dog and you don't give a damn about it. My, now we, we have too many flabby tabbies. What, 10,000 this week, 10,000? Let's spend millions. And how come we don't have a dog up here to uh, 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 her, usually give away a dog? I guess that dog's going to be executed. We don't need to spend $10,000 on a dog park exercise. Matt Hunt. I think me and Red, Ray covered this last time about the dogs and the dogs parking and pooping. I think that the dog park should be allowed $10,000 so they can poop. Mr. Herman. Batman wants you to know you can run the clock, but it's not going to matter. Finding that the dog park is illegal action to provide the citizens with safe sidewalk and streets with $10,000. You subject all individuals to harm. But yet, woof, woof, I'm a supporter of dogs. I'm a supporter of dogs, Mr. Goat. Man. But we're talking about the dog park in Herman Park because Jose Weezer's not here. He's too busy talking to the girls about Francine Godoy, a warning. But again, in CD14, Batman wants all of you to know that on June 23rd, 2015, all dogs will be eligible for Herman Dog Park to provide dogs with appropriate exercise and play equipment while we work along with our dogs. Roof, roof, roof. I'm talking about Herman Park, sir. Herman Park. Dogs got to exercise. Dogs got to exercise. And I'm Sergeant, exercising the right for the dogs. I know. To Thank you very much. Please conclude your comments. I find it horrible. You take the money of the citizens to pay for dog parts when the elderly and the disabled are abused by your disgrace, disrespect and discretion to spend money under the American Disability Act. How dare you? $10,000. Look at our movie. It's better than your dog park at Herman Park and CD4. So Batman wants all the kids, all you kids listening. Batman can't show up at the LAPD commission meeting because Tuesday it's closed. Sorry, Bat. Wayne Spindler. Yes, we have to be very quiet. Please speak up so you can be heard uh, by the I'm, public. I, I'm trying because I, I'm trying to speak as peacefully and quietly as I can because I know. Mr. LeBond, you're hungover. So now we're going to talk about the, the Herman dog fight. Please speak up, sir. Okay. So now we're going to have the Herman dog park for all the dogs. And then everybody's going to take their dogs into CD14 for Mr. Jose Weezar. And the dogs are going to be able to run free and shit all over the field. And then they're going to be able, with only $10,000, to run and dig. And then they're going to run with their little paws on the ground. And then they're going to be going, and you're going to use water. You're going to use lots and lots and lots of water to sit there and do the lawn. And the lawn will be all green and grassy, while all the poor people in CD14 can't take a shower because they have no water. So the dogs are going to run and run in CD14 at the, at the Herman Dog Park. And they're going to be running with their little tails wagging in the free area while all the gangbangers are across the street watching, hoping they sell some drugs. Ruff, ruff. So the Herman Dog Park is a great idea. That's exactly what we need for a city infiltrated with drugs and illegal gambling. Ruff, ruff. So please support this forthwith immediately so all these other little puppies and cats ruff, can go through there and be chased by the dogs. Ruff, ruff. And then they can go around and even meet a pig. And then finally, and this is great, maybe a special guest appearance by 
Council District Number Two, Paul Krakorian, who looks like a goat. <laughs> so please support this. Give a shout out to the dogs. <laughs> no speakers on the queue. Open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 eyes. Thank you. Members, at this hour, I'm going to have all public comment one minute to conclude this meeting. <laughs> item number 10, John Walsh, item 10. John Walsh at HollywoodHighlands.org or J. Walsh Confidential tweeting at Hollywood Dems. This is the uh, Central Avenue Jazz Festival. I've attended most of them. They're excellent. Notice something here. They're not charging the city for their banners the way others do. They're doing it the right thing. And this is just a couple of blocks from where Ezel Ford was murdered by the cops. Uh, they are paying for their own banners. All this does is approve the content of the street banners, which is attached to the council file. What, this, what uh, the uh, organizers are doing the right thing. They're not chiseling the city. They're not trying to get money for their favorite banner company. All they're doing is advertising this excellent festival, which uh, uh, is on July 25th and 26th. HollywoodHighlands.org. Brian Barajas. All right. Um, I had a comment about this um, jazz festival. Um, I know that uh, I've been coming down here um, opposed to anything that is not classical music. I know Cedillo uh, references a Aztec or, uh, orchestra that uh, has uh, classical music in it. Uh, but I am totally uh, opposed to this jazz festival, particularly because it, um, I, I would say that people should look at a documentary by a, ja a trumpet jazz player named uh, uh, Winton uh, Learson Mar Marsalis, and the and the title of that 1992 uh, documentary is Baruch Duet with Kathleen Battle. Mr. Hunt. I wanna pop pop, I wanna pop pop. I love Mr. jazz. Hunt, Mr. Hunt. I love jazz. I love jazz. Okay, speak to the issue. Mr. Hunt, you can't do that. We want your public comment, please. That's my very scene is okay. not visible or public? Public comment, please. Right? No, on the issue. Yes. Okay? Thank you. Conclude your comments. Mr. Herman. Sorry to hear that white people don't got no rhythm, sir. But the gentleman had a very good beat, and Batman wants all of you to know that. Come and see my movie Tuesday. 623, 2015, Batman is back, Jack. Now, the subject of matter of jazz regarding Mr. Winston, I agree with Mr. Barajas. Every point is so factual. Racism, racism, racism. And that's why Batman stepped up to this podium today to bitch. Bitch about the rights of Mr. Winston and any individual who wishes to play their jazz at any festival, you racist. And the you're fine all, lady there laughs about issue. it because she's aware of Mr. Price installing and you're not talking to include to the festivities of the event. Don't forget Batman on a banner. Wayne Spiller.
passes. Mr. Spindler passes. No speakers on the queue. Open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. 13 ayes. Item number one. John Walsh. Did you did you call? John, John Walsh at HollywoodHighlands.org. Uh, then this is uh, something that's always on every uh, agenda. These are the uh, notices for public hearing, and this concerns uh, nuisance abatement, uh, building and safety. Again, uh, remember, I've lived, I, I first lived in L.A. in 1966, before some of you were even born, okay? Uh, up there, and uh, when you do a good job, I'm, I'm not going to get up there and attack everything you do because I'm a white man. No, no. When you do the right thing, we tell you to do the right thing. Occasionally, you make a mistake on a lien, we correct it, we help the people, but in many cases, these people deserve a lien on their property, case by case. HollywoodHighlands.org. Eric Previn. Sir, this is, uh, it's Eric Previn, a city resident from CD2, where 1L uh, takes place. This is a, um, a lien on a property for $27,000, so that caught my attention. And I asked uh, our associate over here, and they have made a deal somehow, but we're also continuing it to July 28th, so I'm baffled by it. it it's a robust fine, sir. Uh, I don't know what the person did because it was hard to access here. They don't have the items uh, available for review. So uh, I would just urge you to, I hope it's substantially less, whatever, uh, because these things often start at a small amount and then dramatically escalate. And Mr. Diaz, uh, thank you for your service, uh, Mr. City Attorney. I would just ask that Mr. LeBange be instructed that two minutes is a pro I'm gonna stop now, but two minutes per item, because otherwise it's a content-based discrimination, because on 11, I do have two minutes. Thank you. Mr. Herman. against 15041 West Bassett Street for a small amount of $1,500. I demand you waive all the interest against this property and make a settlement with the people in the background here. Your illegal process of due process sucks, and that's from Batman. Put that on the record, Mr. Mayor. And on top note, I read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and out of the nine, four of them from you, Mr. O'Farrell. Take care of the business of the Shoot. people. Hey, turn that Take down. Take care there. of the turn business there. of the people. Waive all this lien interest and stop denying due process. Send certified letters to every home that you put an illegal lien on, you bunch of contentious monsters. I object to the liens. Thank you. Wayne Spindler. Yes, on item H, Bassett, it's named after a dog, the street, so in the name of the dog park, let's waive the lien on 15041 West Bassett Street. And that will serve as a reminder for people, humans, and dogs named the street after a Bassett hound that the $1,593 fine be waived. Nuri... Nuri, where are you? She's not here today, so her constituents are, and they're really upset. They know that this is a mistake. You know it's a mistake, and the guy that doesn't pay attention, Bonehead Bonin, knows it's a mistake, so he won't look at me because he knows it's a mistake, and it's not even in his district. So the only guy paying attention, like usual, Councilman Curran Price, 
step in for Nuri today, pinch hit, and forgive this lean. Thank you. Keith Benton. Keith Benton, this is my wife, Debbie. Uh, we're here uh, in regards to the, uh, our property at 15041 Bassett Street. Uh, we received a uh, notice to comply, and we did comply. And we paid all the fines, the fees that we had to pay, and, uh, and then we received a letter telling us that we needed to pay even more money. I didn't know what that was about, and uh, I guess that's why I'm here now, just to find out why they want even more money from us after we've already paid all of this money. Everything's the, uh, the, is the convert has been converted back to a garage and everything. We've complied with everything and the inspector even wrote it off that everything was fine and okay, and we we're actually asking for a continuance due to uh, just financial hardship. 15041 Bassett wow. Street. It's in Van Nuys, California. Of course it's and the address is West Bassett Street. West. Right, thank you very much. I have another card from uh, Debbie Benton. We're going to hold this on the desk right now, but if you want to make your comment, Ms. Benton, please. Um, just to concur what my husband was saying, that, you know, it's been a great financial hardship. We complied with the original order, and we paid uh, fines, and now we have another fine on top of that or a some kind of additional fees. Great. And Thank you. We're going to hold it on the desk. We have staff coming down, and I want building and safety to uh, go over to the side and work with the community. Do you have anything okay. to say as far as the representative? If you have a seat, they're going to have somebody from... from this property is, is owner-occupied. I talked to the gentleman okay. Okay. And, the, and his wife, Thank you. and they seem to indicate that the property is, is owner-occupied, so we are going to investigate, the department is going to investigate that and we make a decision. So we request, we request that we continue this case for one week while we investigate the circumstances and then we'll get back to council. All right, you asked to continue. Recommendation for building and safety to continue it. How about what? two weeks? Or what's the next meeting in? Uh... Okay, two weeks is good. Got it. Yes. So we'll continue it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Two weeks without be the first or second meeting or when is it going to be in july okay good let's go one week right now could you handle it one week yeah one week is one good. week one week thank you so much and that's so june 26 june 26 and if the bentons want to go over to the side staff will be able to assist you thank you thank you that concludes public comment on this issue I don't have a card for you, Mr. Hunt. Sorry. Next item. I don't have a card, Mr. Hunt. Mr. President, there's an item from um, item five from Wednesday's meeting the 17th that needs to be reconsidered. That's item number five from June 17th, council file number 15-0348. It is a Bureau of Street Lighting uh, District, the Hesperia Avenue and Santa Rita Street, number one street lighting district. Very and that should well. be reconsidered and then received and filed. Okay, that's uh, for reconsideration. Open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Next item. And um, Mr. President, if you wish, uh, that can be received and filed without objection. Without objection, thank you. Next item. Mr. President, that brings counsel to general public comment. Thank you. John Walsh, public comment. John Walsh at HollywoodHighlands.org and uh, also at Jay Walsh Confidential, also at Two Urban Girls. Okay, June 30th, be gone, Satan, be gone. LaBange is history. There's no June 31st. He's gone. Who takes his place? Crushing defeat, David Rue. And David Rue won because of the angry white guy vote in the Valley, which we pushed. And now 
Mayor Garcetti is in trouble because uh, Austin Butner is after his butt. He's calling him what we've called him all along, a weak, ineffectual mayor. But remember what Austin Butner, who is the publisher of the Times, is interested in. He's interested in running for mayor. That's why he's hanging out with Brown and uh, playing ball with Brown. Uh, Brown. Austin Butner, the publisher of the LA Times, multimillionaire, will run for mayor. Everybody in this room knows it. Brian Barajas. Okay, uh, I think everybody that, um, you know, if I gave you a deadline of June 3rd, uh, would that mean any, to any, anybody here, would that mean anything? Because the matter here is the Greek crisis, which is not a Greek crisis. They're handling their debts, which they don't owe. And here in the United States, if here, figuring that Obama wants to visit, he shouldn't. And every citizen who cares about this country should deal with the crisis at hand. And there's actually many folds, but the result is thermonuclear World War III if you do not handle the situation correctly. And so we're facing a problem with the minds of people. They have, um, in some cases, lost it. But in other cases, like LaRouche Pack, Linda LaRouche has not. Eric Previn. Yes, Mr. LaBonge, it is Eric Previn, a, a city resident from District 2. Uh, on uh, Wednesday, Council file 15-0657 uh, was announced in open session a settlement uh, for $1.5 million in a case called Jeffrey Shoemaker versus the City of Los Angeles. Uh, this body inadvertently or intentionally failed to open it to public comment. I had signed up, so I would ask Mr. Diaz to address I did ask him and his uh, superior, Valerie Flores. I asked the city attorney to handle it, and I asked Mr. Koretz, and everybody seems to have ignored it. It's important, and it's an important case. I will have to refer to it when you let me speak on it. Item 11 today is uh, the great Marquise Dawson is coming to uh, this team, and uh, there was an item asking to uh, exceed the contribution limits to office holder accounts or um, regular campaign accounts to do something called gifting, up to $100,000, which I have to tell you uh, seems unseemly at the very least. I asked the Ethics Commission, who are unfortunately all on pre-4th of July celebratory conduct, so if there's a way that we could put that on the agenda properly... So that, that concludes your comment. Thank you. Mr. Hunt. Mr. Hunt is not here, so we call the next card. Mr. Herman. Now, to all you oppressors of the law... Violation, stark reminder of the city's failure to properly address all our concerns, more so to our future, the children here, and more so to no one who's here to listen to your nonsense. Batman wants to address the real issue about homelessness. It's at fault because all of you take no accountability. Cruel and unusual punishment by First Amendment right violations? Eighth Amendment right violations and discrimination under Title I, II, III, and let's even throw in seven federal ruling that you suppress the public by censorship of one minute, cruel and unusual punishment, the reminder of your failure to properly address the real concerns. Don't vote for Elf, Mr. Englander, with the big ears, or county supervisor. Ah. <laughs> what did you say? F me? Go ahead. Englander, go ahead. F me. Come on. What did you say? Wayne Spindler. You're next. Sergeant. Uh, regarding. Well, no, Wayne Spindler, I'll call you next, sir. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes, I understand that Englander and the Englander Liberation Front is here today to oppose his attempted takeover of Mike Antonovich's Council District 5 seat. Mitchell Englander, the evil little dwarf, and the Elves Englander Liberation Front is here to fight this cause. Members who are concerned and denizens of, C of the Supervisor District 5, including the cities of Pasadena, Canyon Country, Valencia, and the northmost county, I urge you to go to your local city council meetings as I'm doing today and apprise people of this danger that is lurking, that the L.A. City Mafia is attempting to take over Mike Antonovich's seat for the next 12 years using the evil dwarf, Elf, Englander, Liberation Front. Stop the All right, now that concludes your comments, Mr. Hunt. public comment, right? All right. Here's what I don't understand. A Ninth Circuit winner getting charged with the same crime time after time. A hundred dollar ticket costing the city of Los Angeles $120,000 for jury trial. What sense does that make? You would think that you guys had enough. Right after this would be another federal trial. You guys have arbitrarily, capriciously, and facetiously abused my rights at Venice Beach. Mark Fur, let's get ready to rumble! I hate to say this, don't become a jackass too, Mark Fur. I will beat you in federal court, and I will beat you in superior court. Think I want Ninth Circuit winner right to due process. You cannot process the law wrong. You cannot process the law wrong. And I don't see Sid Macedonian here. Sid, oh, Sid, there you are. Thank you. Councilman, good morning. I came today here to discuss something important regarding my case and Mr. Huizar out of respect I'm not going to discuss that today. All I need to say, and I hope that I have the attention of this council, I don't mean to say that these individuals have no right to express themselves. They do. And I'm all for it. But I beg the city council. I'm sure there's a lot of citizens in this town who do have serious business, and their business is serious too to themselves. But the thing is that when we drive 30, 40, 50 miles to get here to discuss two minutes, and then we shorten to one minute, and it falls on deaf ears. You people are all tuned out. I don't say this out of disrespect to you. But what do I do? All of you know I've been respectful to all of you for over a year. But I cannot discuss serious matter where this shenanigans are going. You guys could do something. I beg, even though my case is serious, but I need your help. All right, Sid, why don't you go to the ropes? Anyone who wants to help Sid, go help Sid. Thank you. No other cards at this time. So we close public comment. Madam Clerk, on item one, I forgot to call for the vote. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. President. I believe there's also one remaining card. One card here. Joel, I want to say. Jose Juarez? Is Jose here? Item one. Uh, Your Honor, uh, my name is Jose Suarez, and I live at 18159 Kittrich Street. And I'm requesting a one-week extension on my property. Sir, one week continuance on this item. 
So it's okay. Thank you. You got to go out and see the council office. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Mr. President, that will be con that item will be continued to June 26. Thank you very much. Mr. President, at this time, council should vote on the remaining items for item one. Later. All right. Thank you. On item one, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Next item. Council has motions for postal referral. So ordered. That clears the desk. All right, members, any announcements for this weekend coming up? Mr. Busca, you know? First and foremost, happy Father's Day, Father's Day to our colleagues and to the city family. Enjoy your Sunday. Just yesterday, colleagues, an incredible announcement was made um, in an effort to revitalize our LA waterfront, um, Alta Sea, which will ultimately be a premier marine research center in partnership with the Annenberg Foundation, announced an amazing partnership with SpaceX. Um, we announced that yesterday in front of the LA Harbor Commission. Stay tuned, more is coming. And thank you for your ongoing support of our um, LA waterfront efforts. Thank, thank you for the you. Good job. as well. Thank All you. the way. Is that big duck coming back there? Joe, is the big duck coming back? The, the duck, not yeah. just yet. We are yeah. next year, every two years every we two have years. The, uh, the Tall Ship Festival. That's for 2016. Got it. Any uh, other announcements? Members, uh, summer starts on Sunday, the 21st today, the longest day of the year. And on the 22nd, anyone is. Welcome to join in a hike to Mount Hollywood, especially our special Irish interns. Meet at the observatory parking lot at 6 o'clock, and you'll have a wonderful hike and a picnic on top of Mount Hollywood. Let's all rise for adjourning motions right now. Oh, shit, looks like we all have one. I got two. Oh, wait a second. Going to just all rise, please, Mr. Price. Thank you, President. Uh, as a follow-up on our moment of silence uh, this morning, uh, I'd ask to be adjourned in the memory of the nine individuals who were tragically slain in Charleston, South Carolina, on Wednesday night. These fathers, daughters, grandmothers, and brothers left their homes to attend service at Emmanuel African American Methodist Episcopal Church. Uh, as they had faithfully done so on many evenings before, never imagining that their lives would be taken by an act of violence. Reverend Clementa Pinckney, uh, re referred, uh, remembered by our colleague uh, Mr. Wezar earlier, was 41, a father of two who received his first appointment as a pastor at the young age of 18. He was first elected to the state's uh, House of Representatives in 1996 at 23, and four years later to the State Senate. Reverend Sharonda Singleton was 45. She was a member of the staff at Emanuel AME Church, uh, but she also was a speech therapist and a track and field coach who was beloved by the children she worked with. Myra Thompson was 59 years old and a loyal attendee uh, of Emanuel AME Church. Uh, those who knew her said that her only goal in life was to spread joy and the gospel. Tawanza Sanders was the youngest victim of the shooting. The 26-year-old was a graduate of Allen University and witnessed, witnesses said he attempted to save the life of some of the other members of the congregation, asking the shooter to take him before the others. Ethel Lee Lance was a loving grandmother. The 70-year-old uh, um, woman worked at the Gale Yard Auditorium for 34 years before retiring to spend more time at Emanuel AME, uh, where she was also a sexton. Cynthia Hurd was 54 years old. As a 31-year employee of the Charleston County Public Library, Hurd dedicated her life to serving and improving the lives of others, the library has stated. The Charleston County Public Library, 16, 16 locations were closed yesterday in memory of Hurd and all the victims of the shooting. Reverend Daniel L. Simmons, Sr. was 74 years old and a retired pastor, also on the staff of Emanuel AME. Earlier in his career, he also served at Greater Zion AME, just outside of Charleston. Reverend DePayne Middleton 
doctor, was 49 years old, and the mother of four beautiful uh, daughters, uh, <clears throat> uh, in, in one who had just been admitted to the uh, Wesleyan University uh, uh, Learning Center. Susie Jackson, uh, at 87, Susie still was a spirited member of her church. She sang in the choir, was on the usher board, uh, where she served for many years. She was a loving mother and grandmother. This incident reminds us that despite the progress we've made, we still have more work to do to erode the kind of hate in our world. But these nine victims are also tremendous examples of tolerance. May our thoughts and prayers be with the families and the victims and all the people of Charleston as they heal from this tragedy. Thank you, Mr. Price. Thank you. And Mr. Kokorian. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, I'd ask that the City Council adjourn in memory of Cookie Spancer, who passed away unexpectedly on Sunday, June 14th at Valley Presbyterian Hospital. Cookie lived in the San Fernando Valley for 40 years. Uh, she was a transplant from Brooklyn. Um, she was a loving wife, mother, grandmother, educator, and loyal friend. She was known for many things. She was an early childhood specialist, a parent educator, teacher, author, curriculum developer, and school administrator. She received degrees uh, from Hunter College and also from New York uh, State University. Cookie taught and developed curriculum for Head Start preschools and for primary grades. Uh, she is the author of several gifted and talented workbooks used by schools and also facilitated many classes, workshops, seminars in the field of early childhood education for teachers and for preschool directors. She's been honored by uh, our city uh, many times for her work with parents at shelters for homeless women and children. Um, Cookie is survived by her husband, Gil Purish, her son Stanley Spancer, who lives uh, in CD2 in Studio City, her daughter-in-law, Andrea Spancer, two young grandchildren, her brother Martin, many cousins, and probably hundreds of friends uh, throughout the valley and elsewhere, a close-knit group of childhood friends who stayed together throughout their life and have known each other since the fifth grade, and Cookie was the, the glue that held them all together. So um, she'll be greatly missed uh, in the San Fernando Valley among the many people who knew and loved her, and I ask that we adjourn in her memory. Thank you very much. Any other adjourning motions? Mr. Bonnet. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues, I ask today that we adjourn in memory of young Camper Osborne of Venice, who was just two years old and two years and nine months old, uh, who passed away uh, suddenly uh, just this week after, after being healthy. It was a very sudden and unexpected death. He leaves behind his parents, Jordan and Randy Osborne of Venice, who are understandably devastated and in shock. Uh, as I said, up until a few days ago, he was happy and healthy, and he was eagerly looking forward to turning three years old in September. Uh, his mother, Jordan, asked that I say this. Uh, Camper was an angel that was no longer able to stay on Earth. He was only two and a half, but wise beyond his years, as he knew he was ready to fly into God's arms. He also loved monster trucks, playing, climbing on things he wasn't supposed to, having books read to him and his family. Even though, you all never, even though you all never knew this little angel, he's smiling down on us right now. If you catch yourself smiling today, think of him. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Buscaino. Thank you. Wow. That's devastating, Mike. Um, colleagues, I ask that we adjourn in memory of the grandfather, my former legislative deputy, John Larson, Louis Joseph Reynoso who passed away a few days ago. He was born on December 9th, 1927, here in Los Angeles, graduated from Cathedral High School, served in the U.S. Army from 1952 to 1954, and was stationed in Germany as a transportation specialist. He married his longtime love, Annie Platt, on November 14, 1954, with whom he had three daughters and two sons and resided in um, Whittier. He worked as a sales manager for Occidental Petroleum for 30 years and spent his entire, his whole life spending time with his family and traveling the world. Lewis was an exceptional athlete and sports fan. He played semi-professional football and followed the Dodgers, Lakers, Rams, and Raiders. 
He is survived by his wife, sister Vicki, children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. A visitation will be held from 5 to 9 p.m. Sunday, June 28th at the Guerra and Gutierrez Mortuary in Whittier, followed by a visual at 7 p.m. Funeral Mass will be offered on um, Monday the 29th at 9.30 at St. Mary's of the Assumption Catholic Church. Our thoughts and prayer goes out to the entire Reynoso Larson family. May he rest in peace. And secondly, if I may, I'd um, like to call on um, my Economic Development and Planning Director, Dave Roberts, to join me on this one. His um, wonderful and beautiful sister, Ingrid Margaret Robles, um, Roberts. Roberts, sorry, passed away. Um, she was a, a devoted mother, um, grand, da grandmother, daughter, sister, niece, aunt, cousin, and friend to many. She was born on September 10th, 1967, and three years later moved to Los Angeles. Uh, she attended St. Margaret Mary Elementary School in Harbor City, later moved to Rancho Palos Verdes. Uh, she attended St. John Fisher Junior High and Bishop Montgomery High School, earned two degrees from Loyola University while raising her only son, Anthony. Uh, she was a successful management consultant and a managing director for First Picks Management and for Keyshawn, Inc. She also ran the Keyshawn Johnson Education Foundation and was involved um, at the Genesis Center as their vocational chair and was their 2012 Silver Rose honoree. In, 19, in 2014, NFL Hall of Famer and friend Marcus Allen, along with another friend, Denise Coleman, established the Ingrid Roberts Charitable Fund to fight very rare cancers, much um, like the one that took her life. Proceeds go to the UCSF Medical Center, the UCLA Medical Center, Louisiana State University, and others. You can contribute at the website um, IngridRobertsCharitableFund.com. She is survived by her son Anthony, her parents Linda and Herbert, her sisters Julie and Andrea, her brother David, her brothers-in-law David and Chad, her grandchildren Layla, Isabella, Xavier, and many other friends and family members. On Monday, a homecoming celebration will be held um, June 22nd at 9.30 at the Cathedral of Our Lady of Angels. Um, David, to you and your family, our thoughts and prayers uh, go out to you. Um, may she rest in peace peace and, and may God um, continue to bless you and your family th uh, through uh, this um, the passing of your sister um, she was an amazing woman who gave so much and her motto was live love life may she rest in peace thank you thank you very much members that it comp it completes the journey motions uh, go further and serve the city well That's thank our old. staff today our clerks our city attorneys sergeants and especially the sound team from ITA. Have a great we weekend. Continue to enjoy and love Los Angeles. This meeting's adjourned.